All right, since you Ram guys are chomping at the bit, I thought I'd give you a little bit of an update. You see here, I've got my model. This is of a 17 Ram short bed. And the standard box is this model in green. Um, pretty weird what Ram did here. I'm gonna give you a top down view. You can see the short box is, the bed rail is parallel to like the center of the bed. Um, the standard box, the side of the bed here, you can see again, is parallel to the center of the bed, but the bed rail itself is at an angle, a pretty severe angle here compared to the center line of the truck, um, which is making the bedside racks look, let me, let me hide the short bed. It's making the bedside racks look really strange because I'm running the racks parallel to the center center line of the truck and to the bedside, which you can see here. But the bed rail itself is at this angle. So that's kind of goofy, but the, the only solution really is to do what we're doing and keep the racks straight and let the bed rail run the way that it is. I got a feeling the plastic cap maybe reduces this, um, but I got to get eyes on that. So anyway, uh, let me hide this one bring back the other one uh, what we got here for the ramp is uh, a panel kind of like this well a similar panel towards the front um, this happens to be the passenger side but the driver's side is the same uh, it attaches in back here best I can tell the 16 plus rams have these hole features here. I'm not going to cut this hole out of the actual panels. This is just for alignment purposes to kind of visualize it. Um, so you're going to drill two holes in this panel in the truck and install a threaded insert. We're going to use this hole down here next to your tow loop. So that's already there. And then I decided to decouple the mounting bracket from the panel itself to give us a little bit of um, wiggle room so you'll you'll install two more threaded inserts here um, but we've got these holes a little bit oversized and then you've got the slotted features up here so um, you don't it doesn't need to be perfect in order to have a perfect installation so what I'm going to do now is open this part and I'm going to create a flat pattern so we're going to flatten the part you see I've got the part flat now this is what we're gonna cut out on the plasma table. And then I've got this sketch here. You see, I've got this stuff. I don't need that anymore. The purpose of this sketch is to cut bend lines into the part for prototyping purposes. Um, this way I get, I, when I, I can fold these up by hand basically, um, but I know that the bend is perfectly, perfectly placed there. So we've got that, we've got our sketch. I'm gonna export a DXF, save as a copy. We'll call it flat pattern, blah, blah, blah. Um, I wanna record geometry and sketches. It's gonna generate that DXF for us. We'll preview it, make sure it looks good. It does. It's mirrored, but that doesn't matter. All right, now I'm gonna take this over to the uh, plasma. Excuse the mess out here. It's been a little bit of a crazy week. I'll go back to the plasma table here. And I was cutting some stuff out of 16 gauge last week. Teaser there. Um, and I think if I can fit it, I'm going to cut this panel out of the 16 gauge here. It just makes the cutting go faster. It doesn't really impact fitment as far as this is concerned. I'm going to turn our air on. Turn the refrigerator on, get some good clean dry air. Um, so anyway, I was saying I'm gonna cut it out of 16 gauge just cause that'll be fast and for fitment checking purposes, it's just fine. So let's get the table fired up here. We'll turn on the controller. On the plasma itself. 
I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to get it dialed in uh, just because I got a pretty good cut out of it last week and this isn't a cosmetic part. We just need it to be uh, able to check fitment. We'll stick our USB drive in here. A USB hub would make my life easier, I guess. All right. So this is the cut file I was using for that panel the other day. I'm actually gonna just reuse this file. I'm gonna add a new part. Panel. All right. So there's our panel of the piece of material. I'm going to drag this around because I know this material is like indexed properly um, and we want to make good use of the sheet. So I'm going to fiddle with this and create the G code and then we'll pull that into our plasma cutting software and cut the piece. All right. Next thing we're gonna do is open command CNC. I've got our G code created. This is the program that controls the plasma table. So if I kill the E stop, I should be able to induce motion here. So what I really wanna do is get this set up with a, an origin, a zero, zero point. It's about on the corner of that sheet, but gives us a little bit of wiggle room because we don't want to ride the edge and have problems there and screw up the whole cut. So I think that's pretty close. I'll double check it. And then we'll zero our X and our Y. We'll bring in the file. If I can remember where I saved that. There you have it. That looks familiar. You see I flipped it over to kind of just make use of the sheet. Uh -huh. All right, I'm going to double check the uh, the uh, zeroing of the X and Y, and then we'll, we'll let it rip. All right, they've got us ready to go. We've got our torch head control on. I'm going to go ahead and hit run, and then we will resume, and it should uh, fire up. So the panel cut really nicely. Um, I cut a couple of the support brackets at the end there. Uh, you might have seen during the video I tried to capture it, but like the panel bowed way up. Uh, but because this um, plasma cutter has torch height control, it senses the distance to the cutting surface and adjusts. So it maintains a nice clean cut. That popped out nicely. Now what I'm going to do is let some of the fluid drain off of it, and then we will clean it up and bend it up and see how she fits. All right, so I've got our panel cleaned up here. I put these two bends in there, pretty straightforward. Uh, I held it up here, fits pretty close. So what I'm gonna do now is I went and made a drilling template <clears throat> out of paper here. So I'm gonna tape this in place. I'm gonna mark the hole locations and then I'm gonna drill them and install the threaded inserts. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right. So I, uh, I skipped ahead a little bit yesterday afternoon because I thought I wanted to make some late changes, and I did. Um, I did go ahead and, and drill and install these two threaded inserts. That was a piece of cake, so that's, um, that's good. I used a paper template that we'll be including with each kit, something kind of like that. I may even cut these out a real thin sheet um, so that they're more durable and easier to use. Um... So we've got the panel and then we've got this support bracket here. I don't have that in yet because I don't want to nail down that location just yet. Um, I made a decision late last night uh, as I was kind of polishing this design up 
getting ready for production to scrap this bend. What we're gonna do is extend the panel all the way out here so you're gonna get a little bit more real estate. And then I'm gonna use a spacer right here with bolts going through the panel into here. There's no reason for a complex bracket. What this buys us is that then instead of having a unique left and right hand part, we can use the same part on both sides. For me, that helps me keep uh, a smaller number of SKUs in stock. Um, but the bigger benefit is if you happen to have a panel and you wanna swap sides or sell it to somebody that wants an opposite side, um, that's something that'll be easier to do. I did also finish the design for the front. That's the same kind of deal. So I'm gonna go uh, pull new DXFs, bring them to the table. I'm gonna cut them out of eighth inch this time because I'm pretty confident in the design and uh, we'll mount them up for good. So let me go do that quick. Okay, so the other thing I've got going on is I've got a support back at printing. Um, I, of course, can cut these on the plasma and bend them up, but the printing ensures that I'm getting perfect uh, dimensional accuracy without having to do a lot of um, checking after plasma and bending. So for the sake of prototyping, this is um, much more accurate. It's faster for me to be accurate. So uh, obviously production, those that's all dialed in anyway. Um, but this would be a good way to double check that bracket. So this should be done in uh, an hour or two, which should line up with uh, when I got some time to do the final test bit. All right, so real quick, I've got a bigger piece of material loaded up here um, that's uh, 11 gauge. And what I've got here is three identical parts. These are two inches by an inch and a half. This is just a little generic part that I use to test out my plasma cutting specs. So for each of these three parts up here, I've got an operation down here. Uh, so I open up this operation. It shows the tool that I'm using, which is a fine cut uh, uh, cutting consumables. And then it shows a feed rate and I can uh, dig in here and see what my voltage is, cut height, that sort of thing. So what I do is uh, if I'm going to do a big cut, which this panel will be, um, I just cut three of these out real quick and try and narrow in on, uh, based on the air and stuff that I'm getting now, what's the best, what are the best settings. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and we can check them out. So you can see I've got the parts loaded up here. Um, I'm actually not going to watch it cut. I try not to do that because it's not great for your eyes. But more importantly, I want to watch my torch voltage and my uh, Z height and feed rate to make sure that I'm getting out of the table what I'm expecting to so that I can set those uh, settings correctly. So when we're looking at these three parts after they're done, I know that they were actually cutting at the correct feed rate, for example. So let's let her rip here. So you can see I skipped ahead a little bit. Um, the cutting of the panel, you can see it's a really nice cut, good quality. It's a nice looking piece. Um, because there's no bending involved, we can go straight to test fitting. I've got the red 3D printed bracket that I showed you earlier sitting in here. It's not gonna have this sidewall on it, uh, but I added that to the print to add a little bit of rigidity to the plastic part. Um, that's going to have threaded inserts or just be threaded itself so that there's no hardware on the back side needed here. Um, 
The alternative to doing that is carriage bolts here, so it's lower profile. So that's a decision yet to be made. Um, let's see, on the bottom here, we've got a 5 16 bolt going through the existing hole there with a spacer. And then this is the, the change that I made earlier today, late last night, was that instead of the bent piece here, we're gonna use a little dog bone looking spacer, recessed for the threaded insert to hold the panel off there. Um, this turned out really nice. It's gonna be really nice and rigid. So this is your first peek at the pre-2019 RAM. I guess it's fourth gen RAM. You guys can correct me on that if I'm wrong. Um, bedside rack panels. So I'm going to do the front panel here in a minute but that's gonna be very similar. In fact, it's gonna use the same bracket and the same dog bone mount just in this back location here. So try to keep the kit as simple as possible. And then because there's no bend, like I mentioned before, this will fit on either side of the bed, which will be nice. So I ran out of uh, quarter 20 threaded inserts, so I can't get this finally installed right now. Drill those holes and install them there. So I've got more coming, they'll be here tomorrow and we'll be able to wrap that up. Um, and then I've got a couple of people that have been hounding me for these for almost a year or so now. So tonight what I'm gonna do, since we've got a successful test fit here, is I'm gonna cut a handful of these and get uh, one or two kits ready to send out um, for some evaluation, but more or less, um, just to get a couple of them out there and get some pictures, so. Okay, so I was gonna show you the 2019 bed as well but I think I'm gonna hold off on that and make it a separate video. I have those panels just about done. Um, if, in fact, if you saw them at SEMA, um, they're pretty much the same as that. I just wanted to make sure that we got these ones done before or at the same time. Um, so I'm gonna cut more of these panels, dial in my drawings and prints and stuff for these new dog bone spacers and get those sent out. Um, and then uh, get these all pushed into production. As soon as I have all of this kind of um, the wheels turning here, I can fill out my bill of materials, get a better idea on pricing, and then we can set a price and do a pre-order. So I'm looking forward to getting these up on the site for pre-order and, uh, and kind of committing to a delivery date. So we're getting close.